Hey, what's up? It's Sifu Cuddle, and I wanted to make this quick video and show you guys I just received a new sword from LK Chen. Now, um, you've seen some videos I've made in the past um, of different swords from LK Chen, and they have sent me another one, and I'm super thankful about it, and I wanted to share with you guys uh, what it is. So this is called the Yanling Dao, and this is a goose quill saber. And this was, uh, what became popular in the Ming Dynasty, and this is really a pivotal point in Chinese swords where it really took shape to the, the type of sword that we usually associate with Chinese martial arts swords today. So um, a couple of things that you'll notice that stand out is it was popular during the time to have more of a square style um, scabbard and even the square fittings for the pommel and just below the uh, guard here. I believe these are called fang shi. Now the guard itself is actually pretty unique. Um, it's a cast iron, but it's a very solid disc and the little ridges going around this is called a tai yang, which basically means like a sun. So you have like the sun shaped guard and the, the fittings on the sword make it so that it can hang in the scabbard. It'll hang at an angle here. And then there is a lanyard for tying around your wrist when you're holding the sword so that you don't lose it in battle. Now I typically don't uh, do much with tassels or uh, even lanyards for that much, but it does not get in the way at all. As you notice for my grip itself, it doesn't even come close to where this sticks out. And even if it did, this wouldn't make much of a difference in the grip. Now, the blade itself is absolutely gorgeous. I have the uh, pattern weld. Um, I have the pattern weld steel, but you can also get this in any clear um, steel. It's a little bit more labor intensive that way, but it just depends on what kind of aesthetics you like for it. Um, you can see we have the typical kind of broadsword that uh, shape that we usually associate with Chinese martial arts. A nice curvature with this. It's got two grooves from um, that, that run along the entire thing. You can see one of the grooves goes a little bit further. And then as we get up towards the edge or the tip of the blade, it appears to be a false edge, but this side is not sharp. So it's just ground down a little bit more so that it's very good for stabbing. And that's really what separates this from some of the other um, waste worn swords that you would see during that time. So this is, I, I think this is a really beautiful sword just off of first impressions. And I've had a chance to swing it around a little bit and it just feels comfortable. A couple of things though that I would mention um, if you are already, uh, if you've already done some sword play in Chinese martial arts, um, you're going to notice that the weight is really nice first off. Um, if you've only worked with light broadswords, you, it's going to be heavier, but that's pretty much anything that goes, like anytime you go from the wushu blades or the, the training grade blades from most martial arts suppliers, they are very light. So you're gonna find that moving onto a sword like this is gonna be a little bit heavier, but this actually is not a very heavy sword. It's not as long as the new way dough and it's actually not as heavy either. It's a very comfortable, um, it's a very comfortable weight. Now the point of balance, you can see it's a little bit further out, but I've talked about this before. When it comes to broadswords, you want more of a, your point of balance to be towards the blade. You don't need it to be right here at the guard because you want that forward momentum to chop and slice into things. And of course, stab in this case. Um, the one thing though that you will probably find right off the bat is uh, the grip, because the, the, the handle itself is a square style and you have the square style feng shirt here, you're gonna notice that it's a little, a little awkward in the grip at first. Now there's comfortable ways, if you, if you kind of move your hand a little bit, you'll find where it gets a little bit more comfortable. But I find that I actually have to bring my grip down a little bit on this one because the corners on the edges here, especially towards my thumb, I, I will have a little more pressure going there. It's uncomfortable, it's not painful, but it's something that I would adapt with in, in my own practice. But I think this sword is gorgeous. And when I was looking at the photos on the website, I was really unsure, especially because of how we have this, uh, I, I would kind of call it a false edge, but again, it's not sharpened. So it's, it's kind of, but it's not. <laughs> and the way on the website it reflects, it's a little deceiving in their pictures. 
So I wasn't sure how this sword was going to look. It, I wasn't sure if it was just totally clipped at the end here, but it's got that appearance of just that traditional Chinese saber and it's just gorgeous. Now again, this has a lot of historical value to it, um, not only in you know preserving it and what LK Chen does and the quality of their things. I mean, this is this is based off of a one-to-one. -one, this is a one-to-one -one replica from an existing sword. But um, I think one of the things that you that you really find in in what makes this special is it was a big turning point in Chinese sword engineering and design. And I'm going to talk about that in another video when I compare um, early origins of the broadsword or saber or whatever you want to call it, really, the dao, um, and how it progressed and changed over time and how it was influenced by um, neighboring enemies and associations and allies during those times. So there you have it. This is truly a beautiful sword. Um, it's a really nice length to work with and it's a comfortable weight to work with. So I would say if you're getting into training with more of a cutting style sword or if you wanted to have a historical replica of a sword but you're really unsure which one to get, um, I would actually suggest this one because uh, it is a really comfortable sword in length and weight. Of course, the grip is a little strange at first, but it's got everything that you're kind of looking for, especially when you're looking towards Chinese broadswords or the Dao. So you have the curved blade, you have this really nice gripped handle wrap. Um, the disc guard is not crazy. It's not a huge cup guard. It's not uh, anything too crazy or ornate. Um, and the scabbard is really comfortable. It's, it's clean. It keeps the sword in. It's not going to be clunky and you don't have any crazy extra things hanging off the blade. So I would say if you wanted to start a collection that has that appearance of the traditional Chinese broadsword, this is the way, this, this is the way to start. So uh, let me know. If you guys get this sword, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of it. And uh, I will be posting videos of me using this, doing some cutting and doing some forms work. So be ready for that in the future. But I did want to give you guys just a really, really quick first impressions of this. Um, I'll leave a link to the description. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description below to all of the the sites to the to this actual listing on LK Chen's site, and of course all of the sword information and details down there. The types of steel, the point of balance, the weight, all of that stuff. So check down below if you guys are really interested in this one. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.